If you have just heard of these two terms, business analytics and data science, but if you do not really understand what they really mean, then this video is for you. This is Chaitanya Sambhara, faculty at the College of Business, University of Texas, Arlington. This is going to be the simplest non-technical explanation of business analytics and data science. In the last seven to eight years, the biggest buzzwords in job market and in universities for admission programs have been business analytics and data science. Although technically speaking, these two terms, business analytics and data science mean different things. The curriculum between the programs that call themselves as data science or business analytics are quite similar. In fact, most of the degrees that people actually pursue are usually called masters in business analytics or they have a major or a minor in business analytics in college degrees for bachelor's level. However, when these people with those degrees start working, the job titles that they usually get are called data engineer or data scientist. So I will answer two questions. The first question that I will answer is what is business analytics and what is data science? And the second question I will answer is that why there are so many opportunities in this area? Why is it such a booming field? So the first question is what is business analytics and what is data science? Many people will not like this answer, but a slightly controversial answer would be it's just glorified statistics. But it is also a bit unfair to say that. I should rather say it is an extension of statistics. But the question naturally arises is that statistics degrees have been out there for very, very long, right? Then why do we have a business analytics degree now? Before I answer that question, let me make this clear. I'm not going to refer to artificial intelligence or machine learning in this video. But let us get back to the point. What is the difference between statistics and business analytics? Put in very simple terms, statistics is all about analyzing data, looking for patterns in the data and making predictive models. So in that sense, statistics is a part of business analytics and business analytics degree has four major components. So what are those four important components? So the first step is collection of data. You have to have data to even analyze it, right? So the first step is collection of data. You need to have data to even analyze it, right? However, when you collect data, it is usually raw data. It is not in the format in which you can actually analyze the data. So you need to clean and process the data. And that is our second step, which is cleaning and processing of data. And for the first step, which is collection of data and for cleaning and processing of data, people use variety of tools. The tools can be as simple as Microsoft Excel or SQL, and they can get much complex, where people use advanced techniques such as programming in Python, Pandas, NumPy's, and so on. The third step in business analytics is where the statistics part comes in. So the statistics part is not really involved in the first two steps. It is somewhat assumed that you have collected proper data, but then even in olden days, people used to collect data, right? So how come that is new and a part of business analytics and not statistics? I'll get back to it quite soon. When I give you examples, you will know why I say that. Now, the third step is to do with analysis of the data. You perform regressions or a structural equation modeling or partial least squares. There are a variety of techniques that people use to analyze data. The final part of business analytics is making business decisions based on the insights that you got from the data analysis. And that is the major difference between a degree in statistics and degree in business analytics. In a statistics degree, you tend to focus extensively on the third point, which is analysis of data. However, business analytics degrees tend to avoid those nitty gritty details present in the statistics degree. For example, you tend to avoid matrix algebra and calculus. You just get straight to the point. You do not go deep into those inner workings of those statistical techniques. So business analytics degree takes a broader and a more balanced approach when it comes to collection of data, processing of the data, analysis of the data, and then examining what the results look like and are those results useful and can those results be used in making important strategic decisions for companies. So let me give you a very, very simple example of what those decisions can be like. So let's say you want to examine why do some students in school perform better in standardized mathematics exams than others. Let's say one of the data points that you have is the data on the student's height. And then you analyze how much mathematics knowledge and skills people have and if the height is a determinant of their mathematical knowledge and skills. Now what would happen is that if you do not consider other aspects, what you will see is that the greater the height, the better the student's performance is. Does that make any sense? It does not, right? Let me explain why. 
when you collect data without looking at other key aspects what you would do is that you will pick students from grade 1 or class 1 class 2 class 3 all the way to class 12 now obviously a class 12 student will have much better knowledge and understanding of mathematics than a class 1 student and those class 1 students will be much shorter because they are younger so if you deduce that taller people are better at mathematics your deduction is totally wrong because in this context without considering other aspects what you are looking at is a correlation and correlation is not causation therefore you would want to collect a variety of data the data that actually will determine their mathematics scores for example you would want to collect how far they live from school if they live very far maybe they don't get as much time to study for the exams right then you would want to consider their family income maybe if the family is too poor, it is not able to afford the quality of books that a person from a richer family can afford. Then you would want to collect data on their parents' education level. Maybe those parents who are highly educated likely take more interest in their children's education. And there could be a variety of other factors such as the student's prior record, last three years of their performance in those exams. Maybe that will be a big indicator of how they will perform in this year's exam. So once you collect proper data on a variety of aspects that genuinely affect a student's performance in standardized mathematics exams, then you would want to look at some treatment effects. For example, now let's say you start tuition service at the university. Now you want to see whether the tuition has an impact on the scores, whether students who go through that tuition indeed perform better than students who do not take that course. And what are the differences between the scores before the treatment, which is before the tuition and after the tuition. Now you are doing an experiment in that sense. So simply put, once you have control for all other factors, then you want to examine how much and whether or not something that is of your interest will have an impact on your outcome. And here is where you are using the concepts of statistics to make business decision to know whether or not that amount of investment that you are going to make on tuition is worthy. So I hope that was a simple example and you understood the point. Now let us examine why has this field, business analytics and data science boomed so much in the last few years? What exactly happened? The answer to that lies in the fact that the world today is very different from the world that was there 20 years ago. 20 years ago, there was no social media. 20 years ago, the era of internet had arrived, but it was not as flourishing as it is today. Even in olden days, companies used to use statistical analysis. However, the way they used to use was quite limited. For the most part, companies were using statistical techniques only to examine their process performance. Now, what is process performance I'm talking about? Let's say you are a company and you produce something. Let's say you're a company that sells coffee. Now, you have machines in your company that actually put those coffee beans inside the coffee bag, right? Now, you want to see how accurately do you put enough coffee you should not put too much coffee you should not put too little coffee if you put too much coffee in those coffee bags then you are running losses and if you put too little coffee then you are not doing justice to those customers who are paying you for that coffee right so let's say there are machines and let's say there are containers that come in like this and coffee machine pours coffee beans on the top of it and those machines take those containers away in that belt now what happens is that then you want to examine how close you are to the mean let's say the coffee container says that that coffee box has two kilos of coffee okay do you accurately put two kilos of coffee or not the answer is that almost never you'll always have slight differences even two different coffee containers are not likely to have exact same amount of coffee so let me just draw and show this to you okay so what happens is that you will have this bell curve okay and this bell curve looks something like this and this is let's say two kgs and at the extreme is let's say two and a half kgs and on this extreme is let's say 1.5 kgs okay but overall when you have many many containers then you want to measure exactly how much coffee they are containing and what you would do is that you will check the weight and then if you have good solid processes the variance in your data will be low the standard deviation will be low if your standard deviation is low, this is what your bell curve would look like. It will look something like this. And if your variance is very high, then it will look something like this. So you don't want to be in that position. 
you want to be in this position and this is where you will examine whether or not your business processes in this example the machine is performing correctly so this is the kind of statistics that companies used to use in earlier days but then companies were relatively static now companies are highly dynamic because the business environment has become highly dynamic the competition is very tough now and therefore business analytics has moved beyond process performance companies now make far more and far variety of business decisions in a day than they used to even in a month in olden days and how do you make those business decisions only when you have insights from data analysis for example in today's day and age even just one tweet from an influential person can bring stocks of a company down or can push the stocks of a company very high and you must have noticed when you were searching for a certain product online did you notice that the advertisements for that kind of product show up on other websites as well? Similarly, when companies are doing market research, for example, they want to know what their customers are looking for and who are those customers who are likely to purchase their products or services. For example, in olden days of television, there used to be one TV and all the people used to watch the same advertisements. Even a 10 year old boy who has nothing to do with cleaning clothes at the time, let's say, would watch the ad for Nirma Nirma washing powder Nirma. So in that sense, that company is not targeting the right customer. The company does not know who is watching that TV show. Even in the middle of cartoons, you could have Nirma ads. But that is now how it works today. When you are watching YouTube, the kind of advertisements you see are targeted towards you. Those advertisements could be targeted specifically to you based on your prior history of the kind of content that you consume or maybe some companies are trying to target specific geographies and specific genders and specific age groups of people. So it is quite possible that in a particular geography for young students they show one kind of advertisements and to the older people living in the same area they show slightly different advertisements. A 10 year old child today will not see the same advertisements online as their grandparents. And this is a perfect example of where business analytics and data science come to play. You collect far richer, far variety and scale of data today than you had ever done before. And the more people connect to the internet, the more are the business opportunities for companies. But companies need to know where those business opportunities lie and how to capture those business opportunities. How can they gain more and more customers? And that is where people with skills in business analytics and data science come in to help those companies. And that is why the demand for these degrees is so high today. So I hope with that I answered the second question as well. I know this was a very surface level introduction to the whole concept of business analytics and data science. But trust me, there is a lot more to it. But if you did not know what these topics were all about, I hope this was a good enough introduction for it. Thank you for watching. Jai Hind and God bless America.